Hello everyone, great that you're here, that you made it to um, Miracle Work and um, today it is a glorious day because the peace of God is shining in us, in me, today, now and, and that's lesson 188 and today we take a look at the lesson and um, yeah, actually doing the lesson so it's not just looking at it because that would do nothing but to yeah to open up for the light that is shining um, that is so amazing even that possibility is amazing so I have a couple of um, say yeah ideas that I like to share bef on beforehand and all just to support, in fact, the exercise that we're going to do. Um, so the, um, yeah, the one thing you should know, the one thing you should know is, of course, that there is no order of difficulty in miracles. And one is not harder than the other. It's like there's no differences in illusion, you could say. So. How do we need that today? Well, the peace of God is shining in me now. In order for me to experience that, it would take a miracle, right? So now I say, like, well, for me it's extra difficult because of my situation, blah, de, blah, de, blah. I say, no, 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 wait, 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 wait. There's, there's no order of difficulty in miracles. Like, one is not harder than the other. To, to, to heal a cold, so to speak, or to heal cancer is the same idea. Or to whatever the comparison you're going to make so looking at your own situation you might see like oh this and this and this is yeah that's why it's not working out st um, still that i don't feel the peace of god or who knows what defense you might come up with is going to be washed away by this it's like there's no other difficulty in miracles one is not harder than the other because there's no differences between illusions like they're all illusions it's all the same stuff it's it's like soap bells or soap bubbles <laughs> so it it's not harder to punch one um, soap bell than the other they're all the same so you touch and poof they're gone this is how how you can see the comparison it's like that would be the metaphor for it soap bells all soap bells are equal all soap bells are equal you punch them and they're gone it was just a soap bell you saw the whole world reflected in it on the outside beautiful vision first all shiny and all this but you pinch on it you just give the little push and pook it's gone it's over it was nothing it was just an imaginary moment so this is with your situation too. It's nothing but a soap bell in that sense. Your human situation is nothing but a soap bell. You touch it and boof, it's gone. It's over. And it, 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 it reflected the whole world and all the details and all the dramas and all the this and the that and all the incredible defenses you could come up with in order to protect yourself against the love of God. Not today that's not going to happen so the the bubble is pinched so to speak the soap bubble is pinched it's gone it's gone <clears throat> so there's anything else <laughs> anything else yeah you bring it to the table and, and i will pinch it i love to pinch soap bells that's great i really love soap bells really really do but uh, yeah, they're soap bells. They're not reality. All right. So, <clears throat> see, these miracle principles are really like a big cleanup. So one other one is this: miracles. Miracles occur as natural. Um, miracles occur naturally as expressions of love. The real miracle is the love that inspires them. In this sense, everything that comes from love is a miracle. And this is a pretty wild, beautiful uh, miracle principle. Miracles occur naturally as expressions of love. The real miracle is the love that inspires them. 
In this sense, everything that comes from love is a miracle. And so everything that comes from love is a miracle. Not everything that you think is love is going to be a miracle. See, th these are just little, tiny little differences. So everything that comes from love is a miracle. So you could say, like, in my, uh, in my ex yeah, experience of love for you, when I feel like, oh, I'm dropping my defenses, I'm, I'm not going to resist this, I'm just going to let that occur. In my full giving, in my wanting to see you for who you are, a miracle occurs. If I can take, say, come in touch with you, if I can communicate with you without defenses and see for just one moment a glimpse of the perfect peace that shines in you, something occurs. And that's totally a miracle. It's a natural expression of love. And the love that inspired me Look at this. The love that inspired me to look that way is is where this is really about. Like that didn't even come from me. It literally came through me as an option. Suddenly I feel I can do that. Because I'm open to it, yes. So I'm I'm literally allowing that love to flow through me. That is the amazing part of it. And and yeah, you don't have to take credit for it, um, but it does feel good to to do it. You know, you know this. Like it does feel good to be defenseless in your communication with one another. It feels so good, and whatever is needed for that. If you need to, yeah, to release ideas that you hold, or um, yeah say the the whole emotional release that is related to dropping your defenses is is really what healing is like you allow that to occur Whoosh. suddenly you can feel that you're doing it and and there's no stopping anymore it's like you fall into it you literally fall into love and and allow that to flow through you well, this is this is totally miraculous. It's really lovely. It's really lovely. But you you feel like the emotional, um, say, phase where you sink through when that happens. It's an emotional f f uh, phase. Suddenly it's like, oh wait, well, what the heck? I might as well let it come up. I might as well just feel what I feel. And whoosh, there you go. So that's that's really beautiful. So a natural expression of love. Um, well, maybe one more, because they're so great. It's so all from the Miracle Healers Handbook of for, from A Course in Miracles. All miracles mean life, and God is the giver of life. His voice will direct you very specifically. You will be told all you need to know. All miracles mean life, and God is the giver of life. His voice will direct you very specifically. You will be told all you need to know. Ah, that's so great too. So no worries about that. No worries about how am I supposed to do this? How, how is this ever going to work out? Or, or any of these, these concerns are just in your mind in the way to experience that you get support. So, so you don't need to do that. No concerns about how to do things. There will, it literally will be told. If your mind is open, it will be told. It can come down to you and you can let that flow through you. All right, so <clears throat> that was a little warming up. Uh, all for this, to support the exercise that we're going to do. So the second part is, okay, so where do you end up? Uh, when you actually allow the peace of God to come to you, where do you end up? Like, what's, what's the outcome of that? Where, where do we go with that? And uh, so in chapter 29 of A Course in Miracles, in the textbook, um, there, there's an, 
in the urtext is the F section. It is it is the place where you actually read about um, um, yeah, the changeless dwelling place, it's called. Like that in you, what will never change, where you can always come back to, what it will always be there, that you cannot lose in all this. And um, I love to uh, read some of that with you. The changeless dwelling place. Okay, so there's a place in you where this whole world has been forgotten. Where no memory of sin and of illusion lingers still. There's a place in you which time has left and echoes of eternity are heard. There's a resting place so still that no sound except a hymn to heaven rises up to gladden God the Father and the Son. Where both abide are they remembered both. And where they are is heaven and is peace. Think not that you can change their dwelling place, for your identity abides in them, and where they are forever you must be. So this is like a guarantee, you could say, like a proof of guarantee for you. <clears throat> so I'll read it once more. There, there is a place in you where this whole world has been forgotten. When no memory of sin and of illusion lingers still, like all the soap bubbles are gone, all the concerns are gone, the whole world is gone, all of it is gone, and this is a place in you. There's a place in you which time has left, Look, time is gone too. The world is gone, time is gone, soap bubbles gone, all of it, and echoes of eternity are heard. There's a resting place, so still, no sound except a hymn to heaven rises up to gladden God, the Father and the Son. So it's like there's only, it is so still, there's no sound except like an hymn to heaven rises up to gladden God the Father and the Son. There's just a sounding, it's a sounding, like as a universe is singing. There's an, there's an actual hymn to heaven that is rising up in you, it's all happening in you, rising up in you to make you happy and your Father. Where both abide, are they remembered both? And where they are is heaven and is peace. So this light of this place, the light of this place is actually something we're going to enter into today. Think not that you can change that dwelling place. No, of course not. Like that is established in you forever. For your identity abides in them, <coughs> and where they are, forever you must be. The changelessness of heaven is in you, so deep within that nothing in this world but passes by, unnoticed and unseen, the still infinity of endless peace surrounds you gently in its soft embrace. So strong and quiet, tranquil in the might of its creator, nothing can intrude upon the sacred Son of God within. Here's the role the Holy Spirit gives to you who wait upon the Son of God <clears throat> and would behold him waken and be glad. So it's like however long that's going to take, it doesn't matter. The changelessness of heaven is in you so deep that nothing in this world but passes by, unnoticed and unseen. 
The still infinity of endless peace surrounds you gently in its soft embrace, so strong and quiet, tranquil in the might of its creator. Nothing can intrude upon the sacred Son of God within. Nothing can intrude upon the sacred Son of God within. Nothing can intrude upon the sacred Son of God within. Here is the role the Holy Spirit gives to you who wait upon the Son of God and would behold him, waken and be glad. So here's the role the Holy Spirit gives to you who wait upon the Son of God and would behold him, waken and be glad. So it's like, okay, so this is this is the place where we're where we're going in the direction of that we're going to actually enter that place in you today a changeless the changelessness of heaven is in you and it's so deep that nothing in this world can disturb that it's it's all gonna float by it's so superficial this world is so superficial in all its imaginings it just passes by it is unnoticed unseen completely yeah nothing like what i mean with this soap bell you know like so now we we're going to start with the uh, with the lesson of today so i um, prepared two some sheets for that but actually i want to um say read even more of that and um, and we have time to do that so that's really lovely so i um I want to start with two sheets and then we're going to read parts of it too together uh, if you're in for it um, because I think it's it's like reading this for yourself hearing you say these words is everything that's why when I use A Course in Miracles it's like I love to read out loud I just I want to feel these words resonate all through the place where I find myself through my whole system through my you know like let everything receive that vibration and um, with a lesson like this yes absolutely absolutely so i'm going to share the um the first two i think two or three paragraphs and and then we go read the rest the peace of god is shining in me now the peace of god is shining in me now why wait for heaven? Those who seek the light are merely covering their eyes. Those who seek the light are merely covering their eyes. The light is in them now. Enlightenment, here it is, like enlightenment is but a recognition, not a change at all. Light is not of the world. <clears throat> Yet you who bear the light in you are alien here in this world as well. The light came with you from your native home and stayed with you because it is your own. It is the only thing you bring with you from him who is your source. It shines in you because it lights your home and leads you back to where it came from and you are at home. So that's nothing but light that shines in you, to you, to your home. Like it's, it is all encompassing. It's all around you. It's all in you. So the question is then, why wait for heaven? Those who seek the light are merely covering their eyes. The light is in them now. Enlightenment is but a recognition, not a change at all. Light is not of the world, yet you who bear the light in you are alien here as well. The light came with you from your native home and stayed with you because it is your own. It is the only thing you bring with you from him who is your source. The light in you is the only thing you bring with you from him who is your source. That's just a fact of the matter. It shines in you because it lights your home and leads you back to where you came from 
and where you are at home. Okay, so that's the first paragraph. Can you believe it? Like this is all inclusive. Like this is all totally a part of you. This is the only thing, like the light in you is the only thing that is related uh, to your home. Your light is related to your home. The rest is not. <laughs> that's so wonderful to hear that. So that's why we practice light today. It's like we practice having ex light experiences because that is the only thing that's real about you. The rest is not. And that's why this is a great exercise. And, and see, after 188 days doing the exercises in A Course in Miracles, you end up in this, in this place where the light in you is going to be recognized by you. You have a possibility of experiencing that because it's the only thing that is real about you. Like it's, it's just the only thing. That's really something that you are. The rest is not. The world is forgotten. Um, there's a place in you where the world is forgotten, where uh, there's no concerns, there's no distraction, there's no ideas, concepts about things, so there's no limitation, there's no lack, there's no none of these things that you can come up with in your mind. Like you cannot imagine what that is. You cannot imagine what it is. But you can experience it. That is so great. So that's what we're going to do. So one step further is this paragraph then. And it's kind of exciting to, to do it stepwards, you know. So the light, the light, this light, so even more uh, support. This light cannot be lost. So why wait to find it in the future or believe it has been lost already or n was never there? Why believe that, that it was never there? Why believe that, that you're going to find that in the future or that you have lost it? Why believe that? So these are, this is just one question, but this will be circling in your mind until you have a light experience. Because you will think that it will happen in the future. Or you will think that, you, that it has been lost to you. I've heard so many people say that. Or that it was never there. It's like, well, I don't know what you're talking about. So why wait to find it? Or believe that it has been lost like it's a belief it's not anything else so why why do you do that this is not necessary the light this light cannot be lost so it's another total supportive uh, paragraph it can so easily be looked upon that arguments which prove it is not there become ridiculous sorry <laughs> Who can deny the presence of what he beholds in him? Like, let me get this straight. It is the only thing that's real about you. And you deny the presence of, of that? It is not difficult to look within, for there all vision starts. There is no sight, be it of dreams or from a truer source, that is not but a shadow of the seeing through of the scene through inward vision. There perception starts and there it ends. It has no source but this. So that's another one. It's like, wow, that's, oh wait, that's the instruction. We come to that later. I first want to read um, another part. So before, before the part of the instruction of the actual exercise, you could say, we're going to read some um, something together if you want and otherwise I do it myself of course um, I'm going to share this with you see this is too beautiful not to read that's why I do it so there are some paragraphs before the uh, before the instruction that I would love to read so if you want to join me in that, you're welcome to do so. If not, that I un totally understand too. Um, 
so I'll start with the first one and then you jump in if you can. The peace of God is shining in me now. And from your heart extends around the world. It pauses to caress each living thing and leave a blessing with it which remains forever and forever and forever. What it gives must be eternal. It removes all thoughts of the ephemeral and the valueless. It brings renewal to all tired hearts and lights all vision as it passes by. All of its gifts are given everyone and everyone unites in giving thanks to you who give and you who have received. The shining in your mind reminds the world of what it has forgotten and the world restores the memory to you as well. From your salvation radiates with gifts beyond all measure, given and returned. To you, the giver of the gift, does God himself give thanks. And in his blessing, does the light in you shine brighter, adding to the gifts you have to offer to the world. La paix de Dieu ne peut jamais être contenue. Qui la reconnaît en lui-même doit la donner. Et le moyen de la donner sont dans sa compréhension. Il pardonne parce qu'il a reconnu la vérité en lui. La paix de Dieu, lui, en toi, maintenant. Et en toute chose vivante, dans l'inquiétude, elle est reconnue universellement, car ce que la vision intérieure contemple est ta perception de l'univers. The, the great thing is the peace of God can never be contained. Who recognizes it within himself must give it. Like there's no, there's no choice in that. If you experience the peace of God, you cannot contain yourself and you must give it away. You can't, you cannot not give it away. And this is so beautiful. So I love that. So the instruction then, this is where we come to then. The instruction is this. So sit quietly and close your eyes. The light within you is sufficient. It alone has power to give the gift of sight to you. Exclude the outer world and let your thoughts fly to the peace within. They know the way. For honest thoughts untainted by the dream of worldly things outside yourself, become the holy messengers of God himself. These thoughts, you think with him, they recognize their home, and they point surely to their source, where God the Father and the Son are one. God's peace is shining on them, but they must remain with you as well, for they were born within your mind, as yours was born in God. They lead you back to peace from where they came, but to remind you how you must return. They heed your father's voice when you refuse to listen. 
and they urge you gently to accept his word for what you are instead of fantasies and shadows. They remind you that you are the co-creator of all things that live. For as the peace of God is shining in you, it must shine on them. We practice coming nearer to the light in us today. We take our wandering thoughts and gently bring them back to where they fall in line with all the thoughts we share with God. We will not let them stray. We let the light within our minds direct them to our to come home. We have betrayed them ordering that they depart from us but now we call them back and wash them clean of strange desires and distort disordered wishes we restore to them the holiness of their inheritance Thoughts are our minds restored with them. And we acknowledge that the peace of God still shines in us and from us to all living things that share our life. We will forgive them all, absolving all the world of what we thought it did to us. For it is we who make the. We gotta move that, that thing. Yeah. Make world as we would have it. Now we choose that it be innocent, devoid of sin, and open to salvation, and we lay our saving blessing on it as we say the peace of god is shining in me now let all things shine upon me in that peace and let me bless them with the light in me thank you so this was the instruction sit quietly and close your eyes the light within you is sufficient it alone has power to give the gift of sight to you. Exclude the outer world and let your thoughts fly to the peace within. They know the way. For honest thoughts, untainted by the dream of worldly things outside yourself, become the holy messengers of God himself. These thoughts you think with him, they recognize their home. And they point surely to their source, where God the Father and the Son are one. So let's let's do this for a moment. So you can say like you can say this in your mind, or like the peace of God is shining in me now. Let all things shine upon me in that peace, and let me bless them with the light in me. So we just be quiet with this for a moment. <clears throat> 